Okay, let's talk about group work. Look at all of those studious children. Here's group one. They all seem to be working. However, Susan is on her phone. Tom is working feverishly on another project and poor Janet. She's working all alone on the assignment you get. So how do we solve this? How do we get students engaged and keep them engaged during group work? The answer is collaborative study groups. Collaborative study groups are an excellent way to get students working together in a format that is less rigid and more engaging. In these groups, students work together to identify gaps in their learning, use inquiry and discussion to fill in these gaps, and apply their knowledge to the course and content. It's a win, win, win. Collaborative study groups have three main parts, introduction of the topic, collaboration to deepen knowledge, and reflection and sharing. Plus, setup is easy. Simply put students in groups of three or four and make sure they have a place to take notes, their laptops, and a large piece of paper to share their answers. Let's watch step one in action. Look at the board today. We are going to focus on some problems of our own, okay? And we're going to use collaborative study groups to try to solve them. We've got one, two, three, four groups here, okay? And we're going to have two different kinds of problems. Just a reminder to everybody, collaborative study groups are groups. And what do you work together? You work together in order to... Solve problems. Solve problems. Okay, that's my best writing. You study or do research for a common goal, reason. Um, what could go in the blank for number two? Blank or discuss a question together. Right. Answer. Answer. Argue. Right. All those are good. And what about number three? Solve some kind of problem. What else besides a problem? Issue. Question. Question. Okay, what else besides a problem or a question? Issues. Issue? Argument. Argument? Give me one more. Mystery. Mystery. A lot of things in the world are mysteries. I got some mysteries in here. So we will see how it goes. Everybody's in the right group? Check the board, check your table. Okay, good. All right. You guys should all have your boards, your papers. You ready to go? All right. These two groups, you have your envelopes. This group, you have your question and your choice. And the last group, you have your question and your choice. Don't open the envelope, please. Let me get that. Figure out some way. <laughs> now, I've already asked you about your roles. So I know everybody knows who's a scribe and who's a leader. And I've already checked with y'all to be sure that you have the equipment that you need. Now, one, two of the groups have something to read. And your question is on the envelope. So these two groups, read, one of you, and then share the problem. Okay. You guys, you guys are a little more intense over here. You have a question. Who's got the no over here? You two. Y'all are on the no side of that. Yeah. You are on the no side. It's the wrong side. Over here. Who's on the no side? I like that one. Read it for us. Is the civil rights? Yes, it did. Now, let's have this one, please. Go ahead. Did the civil rights movement improve race relations in the U.S.? And you two say? No. And you two say? Yes. Okay. So that's what the laptops and the phones are for. Okay? Might want to get them out. 
Do you guys know what a decade of greed is? Uh, yeah. See how easy that was? Miss Purvis reminded them of their task and their roles when completing that task and then introduced a question to their groups. Notice that some groups had a reading passage while some groups had to consult an outside source for their answers. That's one of the best parts of these groups. They can be changed to adjust the needs of your class and your students. It's all up to you. Now let's see what the students do next. The 1980s a decade of greed. I'm sorry, honey, would you read it again slower? For the 1980s a decade of greed. For the 1980s a decade of greed. Yes or no? How are y'all gonna answer that? By looking on our phones and researching. You're gonna have to do a little research. You might wanna get busy. So, write our names. Y'all have the English teacher once. <clears throat> Can I read it? Here's your question. Who is the best, men or women? What have y'all got here? Okay, what have you got? What have you got? What's it called, honey? So there. You can answer which was the best by reading these stories and discussing them together, okay? So, to read, trade, read, trade, read, trade. Jasmine, leader of the world, what does your envelope say? Who is smarter, men or women? <laughs> Who is smarter, men or women? Well, we know that answer. You guys each have a very, very short story. Read it, trade, read it, trade. Then you're gonna discuss, ask each other questions and figure out who is smarter. Reading says, worrying that the 1990s would be the decade in which the bills of the 1980s would come due. Time Magazine reporter declared the past decade brought growth, avarice, and anything goes attitude. What you, what you, what you put in the bill? Ask the question. You know, that's what we're all about is questions. The Socratic questions. So, what can we ask the computer? Was the civil rights movement good? Did the civil rights help? Well, this is. Yeah. Well, no, it's not. But yeah, because the guy said that you can't do 16 or 18 syllables, but she just did it. So it's, she's proven a point to me. Yeah. No. Decadence? Do you know what decadence is? This is. What was the oh, no. um, I'm trying to fix some questions <laughs> like for that. The move point um, over. If you went to a party where everything was real poor and cheap and ratty, that would not be decadence. So what would be the opposite of that? Rich. What else? Give me some more adjectives. Rich, not poor, wealthy. Not just wealthy, but what? Not just happy, but what? These people weren't just rich, they were what? How successful? Oh, enough to live off of maybe the rest of us? Okay. No? They're like luxurious, but they're self indulged. Like luxurious, that's a good word for it. So it wasn't just having money, it was like having luxury money. Right? Like you do what they okay. want. Okay. So. Is that greed? Yes. Yeah. So if we say a decade of greed and they say a decade of decadence, what do you think decadence might be? Um, okay. Or greed. And you say, you know what that means, right? Okay. See if you can find me some evidence that no, it isn't. Decadence. How are you going to do for that? Greed. Okay, that works. I'm just trying to think if I can help you with a question to put in there. Like, um, okay, I think woman. Okay, okay. I think this story is going to be. She split this three down for the money. Get there. Or the 80s, not three. And then see what you get. Okay. This one? She went to the teacher. Not doing a good job. And he did. 
Don't forget to write your question on the whiteboard. So now people write the words together, people can drive together. If you say yes, it is for decorative degrees. Do you say yes, it is for decorative degrees? Yeah, I mean, there's still some raises. Put that into a drawer and steal the prompt. We do everything together. Good. You help him out now. About one minute, kids. Tell them what it says because I can't read that. You can't read that. What do you mean? Well, I, no, I have to write down. No, if this scribe has bad handwriting, the leader wants to take over. The leader may take over. Whomever. Y'all are on the last minute. Get your answer written down. Okay, there you go. That's yeah, that's perfect. Keep going. The the there's not ours. Get your answer. And the conversation. Because to the how awesome is that? As the students work, Miss Purvis moves around the room and helps as needed. The timed atmosphere reminds the students that they all should be working to get something ready for their presentation, but the questions are interesting so that the students do not feel bogged down and they still stay engaged. Let's check out what they have to say about their different questions. Everybody take a look at Jasmine's table. Show us your board. It's pretty crappy. Okay. It's a bad board. All right. Scribe, read us the question and the answer. All right. Who is smarter, men or women? We think that women are smarter according to the three stories. We also have evidence from the stories that proves that point. Very nice. And I didn't ask you to write the evidence down. But could you? Could you give us one piece of evidence why women are smarter? Okay, so... So there. The story is so there. Yes. So basically, she says that until you learn to give he like you. You never meant to anything. He left to be somebody, but he didn't become anybody. But the wife or the girl, she became a teacher because she said that um, the rest of her life at inner city school. So she became somebody, but the uh, guy didn't become anybody. That's wonderful. And the guy had the the. And there you have it. The students used prior knowledge and outside resources to create an informed opinion. They were then able to share that opinion with their classmates, and it didn't take all class period. By using the AVID strategy of collaborative study groups, you will see your students working together in a way that you never have before. And let me let you in on a little secret. These are all freshmen. Yes, that's right. All levels can complete these tasks seamlessly, even your class. So what are you waiting for? Find your nearest AVID guru like Ms. Purvis or Mr. Bostic and get started today. We can't wait to see what your students can do when they work together.